Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to do some watercolor painting. I've chosen this week to paint uh, a pheasant. I love pheasant. They're such a beautiful bird with a green, blue head and purple, brown all over. Um, when I grew up, I used to see them running all over the fields, specifically the cornfields. Um, and... Not that I would do it now, but uh, my family, my, my grandparents, whatnot, had uh, several of them mounted uh, that they had hunted and whatnot, uh, mounted and hung in their house. Anyway, they're beautiful. Let's get, um, let's get down here and see what we can do to start painting this. Uh, I've got mine pre-drawn here. There's the reference photo that I used. It's fairly close uh, representation of that uh the paper that i'm using i know the paper that i'm using this evening because i've got some edges here where it's been cut out of a wire uh, bound uh, booklet uh, this is strathmore 400 series watercolor paper the paints that i'm using over here in the lower right hand corner are the studio uh, set that i use for a long time that's my m Graham watercolor paints and for the most part the paint brushes that I'm going to be using are these my King Art uh, paint brushes the 9020 series and with this I'm just going to jump in and get going um, let's see I'm gonna I think now I think I'll do it right here I'm gonna mix up some blue and I want to start. Natalie is here. Hello, Natalie. Oh, I didn't say anybody who's <laughs> anybody who's here. Say hello. I love hearing from everybody. Uh, let's see. I want to get. I want to get Thalo Blue. I love hearing from you. It's it's that interaction that uh, makes these videos so much fun for me. If it weren't for this interaction, I would probably sit here. I'd probably sit here and paint anyways. But I would. Uh, I'd be doing it by myself and maybe recording or. Uh, Getting ready anyways to, to do some other kind of video. Uh, so Natalie, hello. Anybody else who's coming in, say hello. If you're watching this in replay, uh, leave a comment down below. Say hi. I would still love to hear from you. I've got a little phthalo blue mixed up here. And I'm going to put a little phthalo green next to it. I want these to mix a little bit. Not that much, but... I'm gonna mix them on this bird's head. If you look, if you look at that bird over there, you can see down its neck here that uh, it's a mix of colors. It's darker the the image there. It's darker up here around its eyes and whatnot. Uh, but as it works down here, then the light catches it. It really gets fluorescent. Well, not fluorescent, but it really um, I don't know. It really shines a light. Uh, Traveni Praveen, hello, May is here, hello, May. Um, that was me who posted the night, oh, that was, ye oh, Natalie, okay, cool. That's cool, I went and I found that picture. I don't know that I would have tackled that picture, that was an interesting, uh, picture to try to tackle, but, uh, I thought it turned out great, so awesome job with that. Uh, let's see, I'm putting, oop, down below. Where am I at? Doo -doo -doo, down there. Um, the, my palette colors that I have here. And I'm going to jump in with this. Uh, I've got a kind of a medium sized paintbrush here. And I'm going to start up at the top here with some of this phthalo blue. And I'm not worried about how heavy I put this on at the moment because... Uh, I'm kind of concerned with where I put it on. I had to look at my reference photo for a second. Um, I, I'm not overly concerned about how thick this is as we put this on at the moment because um, it, there's a lot of darkness around uh, this guy's head. And so I, I, we can mix this up almost any strength to get this on here. And for those of you who are new, Treveni, May, I don't, I don't know that I recognize you. Uh, I'm glad you said hello. If you have any questions about me or about my artwork, 
uh, about what I'm painting, about how I paint, about why I paint, throw it out there. If you have questions about paint in general, uh, throw it out there. I would love to hear some questions and spark some discussions. Sometimes I have the answers. Sometimes uh, other people who are watching have the answers for you, but um, I, it's the discussion that I think is fun and important to, to foster. So if you've got some questions about something, throw them out there. Uh, Horsewoman, welcome. Good to see you again. I'm gonna, as I move down the neck on this guy, I'm going to drop in some of the Stalo green. And I want this to start turning a bit uh, iridescent. Did I say fluorescent before, didn't I? I said, I meant iridescent. Did I trace or freehand? I freehanded this. This guy's not really uh, that hard to, to draw. Uh, if you look at him or her, no, this must be a him. Uh, if you look at him, here's, here's a way you can think about doing this. Let's see, let me get a couple of pencils here, right? He's basically, you can see this, he's basically a triangle right here. All right, this should come in a little bit further. It's, I don't want to, I don't want to get too much on the paper. His body here is basically a triangle, right? Not, not much more than a triangle. Whoop. His head up here, it might be kind of another triangle-ish form, but I think of it more of a, as a rectangle that sits on the top. So that's not hard. And then his tail is basically a rectangle out here. Then you got to draw on a couple of extra little bits here and there, but it's not that, it's not that hard. Uh, if you, if you're thinking about it, if you're trying to break down how to draw this guy, it's not that hard. I will admit to, uh, doing a drawing of this on not, uh, watercolor paper. <laughs> Just the first time you do it, for me, anyways, the first time I do it, it, um, it gets a little tricky and the head size isn't always right compared to uh, the body size. And hey, you know, I just have a few little issues, things you can easily work out with, with you know, a practice or a couple of practices before you move it to, uh, to your watercolor paper. But this one was... This one was freehand, and that's probably why it's not, it's not, it's certainly, if you start to look at it, it's certainly not an exact copy of, of that guy, of, of that guy <laughs> over there, but it's, it's close enough, and, and I've, I've told everybody all the time, I don't try to make an exact copy of everything, I don't try to make a photorealistic copy, that's, I've got that, it's, it's right there, wherever it is, it's right there, it's that copy, so I just try to make something that I like and, and enjoy, and I know that if I do a pretty good job with it, um, I'm going to do the bird justice, and it's going to look good enough. All right, so there's there's my first pass on his head. I do have to wait just a second maybe for a little bit of his neck to dry here, but it's basically some phthalo blue, a little bit of phthalo green, and some neutral tint on there. I'm watching my numbers go up and go down. It's funny uh, to see uh, people stop in. They look, well, what's he doing? What's he doing? And then psh, they're out. And then people stop in, what's he doing? What's he doing? And they're out. <laughs> so um, maybe I'm not quite fancy enough to <laughs> get people to stay too much longer. I, I don't know. Um, now, uh, while I'm waiting for this to dry just a little bit up here, um, if I take a look at this, and if you if you go to you can go to my Discord channel and you can grab this image if you want, or if you've got it blown up a little bigger on your screen than I have it on mine, you can see that right in here, his chest right in here really has a lot of purple in it. It's got this wonderful purpley color, and I'm gonna mix up some of this. Uh, what is this cobalt violet? And I'm gonna hope that that holds up. It may not. And then this beautiful warm brown, which I'm going to use because I have it on my palette. Oops, some of this burnt uh, umber. And if I need to, if 
I need to orange that up a little bit, some of those feathers look a little orange, then I can always throw in a little bit of this azo orange that I have here. So there is that. I don't know how many people I've got here. I've got seven people. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask a question tonight. So I wore a baseball hat tonight. And the baseball hat has a pine tree on it. Does anybody know whose baseball hat this is? This is a, I don't know if I want to say this is a famous character. Um, but has anybody ever seen this baseball? I'll give, I'll give somebody three points of which don't matter in any way, shape, or form, but I'll give somebody three points <laughs> if you know whose hat this is. I'm looking. I can't quite touch that. Maybe I'm going to... can't quite touch that. I'm always curious. I bought this hat, and, and I think it's fantastic. And I like the... Uh, I'll give part of it away. I like the cartoon that it came from. And I've been known to wear a vest. These are all great clues. Uh, Horsewoman, you draw on transfer paper first. Transfer paper is a good way to do it. But you've got to... The only problem with transfer paper is you've either got to do it twice or you end up doing it backwards, right? <laughs> I guess you could draw it in transfer paper and then... Just trace it on the other side and then trace it back. Transfer paper is that really light, like, see-through paper, right? I think I have that right. It's like, it's almost like, uh, it's almost like an onion skin, right? It's really, really thin. So that you can see right through it to trace what's underneath. Is that, is that the right stuff that I'm thinking about? Me too. All right, we've got, we've got uh, nine or ten people in here, so I'm going to say it again. If anybody's here and uh, you're new to the stream, you haven't been here for a while, please um, please say hello. I love to talk to people. Let me know where you're, where you're watching from, if this is your first time, or if you're if you're returning love to love to hear about that and is that right i don't know yeah that's close enough i think i got his i think i got his uh i'm gonna call them pantaloons here a little too long they look awfully long up there i'm gonna drop some orange in here also now the one thing i've thought about with this is that pheasant have some white feathers in here and I was gonna leave them um, I was gonna leave some white area in here but I'm gonna try once again I've tried this in the past to varying success but I'm gonna try to drop a little water in here and see if we can't get some water spots in here and, and that'll give it some texture and maybe that will just take the place of some of the the white feather in there that 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 I don't have there we go let's let's get him some something like that uh oh we got somebody now ZD or Z Z C Z D really ZC Creations, hello, welcome back, good to see you again, Tim DeFiore, good evening Michael, new to your channel, fantastic, uh, but I've loved your videos and I really appreciate your enthusiasm, I, I hope if nothing else <laughs> I'm enthusiastic, I do have an enthusiastic love for watercolors and, and I, I do want to spread that around, so uh, everybody says that for me. Wondering what brand watercolors you have there. Are they a mix of your favorites? Okay, I'm, I'm happy to talk about that. I love talking about my, my watercolors. Uh, New York and new to watercolor. Okay, thanks for uh, listing your colors. Fantastic. Natalie, that looks familiar. I'm thinking character from one of my shows, your sun watches. Ha <laughs> ha, you're on to it. Natalie, you're on to it. Um... So, um, 
Oh, you, good Lord, you're from Hell's Kitchen. Holy cow. Um, let's see. My, uh, my watercolors here. So these are all uh, M. Graham watercolors. All of them. They're all listed. Whoop. <laughs> They're all listed down here. And uh, that list, when it starts over, it starts at turquoise up here in the corner, and it goes to yellow ochre down here in this corner, across and across, so you can see everything that I have here. I've picked these out um, because these are the colors I like, right? Uh, I love, I'll, I'll just start in the top while I'm waiting for this to dry or to do something. Uh, turquoise, I love turquoise, so I want to find a place on there for it. Thalo blue, I love thalo blue. It's a beautiful color when you mix it with stuff. It's a bit strong out of the box, um, but I like it. Uh, ultramarine next to it is a staple you have to have because it plays well with so many other things. The other two blues I have here are um, cobalt and cerulean. Skies, Cerulean, and Cobalt. I don't know, we talked about it on Twitch on Sunday morning. That's kind of the true blue. That's the truest blue, people say. So I have it on there. Cobalt Green, I have on here because if I paint landscapes around here, our green, the greenest green we get where I live, kind of is that Cobalt Green color. Um, Thalo Green, same as Thalo Blue. I love Thalo Green because it mixes well with everything. Again, a little strong out of the box, but um, olive green next to it. it kind of goes along with our my cobalt green. It's uh, when the <laughs> when the when the uh, rainy season is done and we no longer have cobalt green. Our greenest is kind of an olive green, which is horrible. Um, not a horrible color. It's just a horrible. It's just not green. Um, azo green I have next to that. I will be honest, I put that on my palette. I thought I would use it all the time. Uh, I might have used it once or twice. The neutrals that I have in the corner up here are, um, oh man, sepia, neutral tint, and Payne's gray. Depending upon how I want to tint something, I will use those, right? Uh, uh, sepia is a, a colder brown, neutral tint is neutral color and Payne's gray is a cool gray. I put a purple on there because I thought I needed a purple and I had cobalt purple. <laughs> That's really the only reason I have it on there. Um, maroon perylene, fall colors. It works great with, it works great for brick and for rust. I, so I have that on there. And then alizarin crimson, which is on almost every palette. It mixes well with others. It's, again, it's one of those ones that's a bit strong out of the box. Pyrol Red. Next to that, that's kind of my red red that I have. And then Quinacridone Rose, which is a cold red. It's kind of a pink. Uh, burnt Umber. Uh, I could have put up here with the browns, but I, I put mine with my reds. It's just a, it's just a middle-of-the-road brown. Uh, then this is my yellow section. And yes, I know that my yellow section has an orange in it. That's Again, that's fine. It can go wherever. But it's Azo Orange, uh, New Gamboge, and uh, Hensa Yellow. Um, it was an orange, a warm yellow, and a cold yellow. And yeah, we talked about it over the weekend. Uh, my cold yellow is just kind of a moderately cold yellow. It's not a really cold yellow like bismuth yellow or lemon yellow. Uh, and then way over on the other side, I don't think this yellow ochre fits with anything. It's kind of an outlier color to me is my yellow ochre. That's why I have those on my palette. I think uh, for me, they work really well. I can use those to mix just about anything that I want. Um, and then the other thing that, uh, Tom, if you're new to watercolors, um, I, I love these palettes. Uh, I don't want to tip it too much. But they have a slanted tray with a little divider in between them. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of the little pans where you've got to dig into them and you end up getting a little circle hole in everything. Um, they work, but I'm not, a, not the biggest fan of those. So anyways, I love, the, I love this kind of palette too. Let's see. 
Uh, let's see, Natalie, you're originally from upstate north of Binghamton. Uh, I think I pronounced that right. Now a Phoenix resident. Whew, so much beauty to paint in Phoenix. There's a lot of beauty to paint wherever we are. We just have to look for it. Sure is. I'm signed up for water class at local desert arboretum. Oh, that's exciting. I'd be totally excited about that. I like to sign up for classes whenever I can. I don't, I don't get to do it much, but they are fun. I keep trying to take a, <laughs> I think I've told everybody, I've taken one watercolor class in my life and I actually absolutely hated it. And I took it because I, I really wanted to uh, meet some other, you know, watercolor artists in the area and see what they were painting and whatnot. Uh, and I just hated the class so much that um, I've never, never pursued another course. I took it through the community college here and uh, I keep threatening, I keep looking at the, the course syllabus for the community college and the same guy who taught it before is still teaching it. And I'm like, I can't, I gotta wait until he's done teaching it before I can take the next course. All right, so I'm looking at, at this part, right, you know, along his back, above his wing here. And what I'm seeing is, I'll tell you what I'm seeing as I go along. It, it gets rather red down here, but as we move up his back, it turns, it turns really gray. I think you can see the gray, blue or gray, as it gets over there. And it's quite dark. Uh, as we move towards the back of this guy, so I'm going to try to represent that here, right? I've grabbed a little bit of that maroon perylene. I'm throwing that in, and I've got a little bit of a sepia, and what I've got is too much water. So I've got to, I've got to really mix this around a little bit. And I just don't want a flat edge here, and... I'm going to mix in just a little bit more red with this. The maroon is a nice dark red, so it, it works really well with uh, sepia. It does. As we, as we come up the back side of this bird over here, these colors are going to get lighter and lighter. And they're going to be a nice... I might even throw a little bit of yellow in up here. Look at this nice, bright, white color, not white, light color on this guy's back. Just a little bit over here. And I probably, I probably should have pre-wet all of this to get these colors to mix just right. But I think with this paper, knowing this paper, we'll be able to do this and make this look really nice. Just give me a second while I do this. This nice, wonderful color. Oh, look at look at the color on this guy. Right? This is this is turning out wonderful. Okay, he's got this nice gray patch in here. All right, mine's not his biggest reference photo, and that's fine. And then it comes down. He's got some beautiful red down here and some darker browns uh, back here before we get to his tail. Beautiful. And, and if I look up here, look at the, the head still retains a lot of that iridescence up here, uh, that nice shine and shimmer. Um, I will say, uh, Tim, 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 I am... I'm trying, I'm trying. Traditionally, I have put on layer upon layer upon layer on my paintings, and I'm trying to get away from that. Oh, I've forgotten something here. I need, uh, somebody, somebody uh, gave me a little sponsorship during the week, so I need to put that on there. Uh, I'm trying, like you can't believe, to do more work in each layer. So for his head up here, um, I got it all nice and wet. That's kind of the nice thing about watercolors. You can get the whole area wet. The paper will hold all that color in. And then I went back and put in some neutral tint 
around uh, the thalo blue on his head and the thalo green. And here I was able to recharge in a little bit of color in here. So we've got this beautiful area right here, um, separate from the area over here. So I'm trying to I'm trying to do more in each layer, and we'll see how that goes. Is the M, uh, Natalie says, is the M gram Illusion Crimson a permanent or fugitive one? I tend to shy away from Illusion Crimson and Opera Pink. Well, I will tell you. As, as I say, I'll tell you, and then I just get up and walk away. I happen to have the um, M Gram color chart here. And here's my Illusion Crimson, and look at this, a light fastness rating of three, which is horrible. <laughs> um, oh, that's, okay, oh, look, okay, so I'm using permanent Illusion Crimson, right? They have two, let's see if I can lift this up a little bit. They have Illusion Crimson and Permanent Illusion Crimson. So light fastness of Permanent Illusion Crimson is two, which is very good. If you can see that, light fastness is two. So the Illusion Crimson, not so good. <laughs> the Permanent Illusion Crimson, much better. And I think it's that same way for Gamboge and New Gamboge is the original Gamboge. Nope, they they only made it Gamboge at this point. Uh, it used to be that the Gamboge color was very fugitive and the New Gamboge was much better. But um, looks like they've reformulated it here. So, so we don't have to worry about that. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, until I think... I have the same palette, metal enamel slanted slits. Yeah, uh, yeah, yep. That's it. This one, this one is made by uh, Color Around. It's the name of the company, but lots of companies make them, and they're basically um, a knockoff of the Holbein uh, palette. I think they were the first ones who started making this, and they're all kind of a knockoff on that, which is. For you and I, it's it's fine. <laughs> we get a nice palette in, and whatnot. All right, now this beautiful tail that this bird has, uh, way out here, I noticed as I was looking at this, it has quite a bit of purple in it. It's got some brown, but it's got quite a bit of purple in it. So I'm just going to put on a layer of this, and it's really light the whole way out here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use my what is the color that I'm using? cobalt purple i have to be careful because i have a I have a different set that i pull out every now and again not that i use it on here all that much and it has i believe diazonine purple on it but this one is cobalt purple so i just want to drop this color on it's going to be uh it's going to be interesting when we get this on because the cobalt purple, like all the cobalts, is very granulating. It's very granulating. So this is going to be a little bit interesting to see. I've got my swatch here. Look at look at just in that little area. Look how look how granulating that is. Right, right. pyro red, super smooth. Right, azo orange, super smooth, and then look at <laughs> cobalt violet is super granulating. So there's that to think about as we do it, but that's okay. That's okay. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. Now I want to come back up and I want to paint um, his wing up here underneath all of these other colors. Kind of, and I'm just going to use this gray that's on my palette to start this out with, and it is, it's basically a, a mix of neutral tint and uh, Payne's gray. So I want to get a, quite a bit of this on here. In fact, I'll paint most of this wing with that color. So 
So, uh, uh, free points up for grabs. I announced this at the beginning. Not everybody was here. Free points up for grabs. In, in, and this is an exhibition, not a competition. So the points don't really matter. But um, I will give three points to anybody who knows what character wears this hat. If anybody knows. I, I, I got a kick out of watching this. I'll give a couple of hints. I got a kick out of watching this show that this character was on with my children. Should give you a little bit of a hint. Uh, and while you're thinking about that, and I've painted the wing, that beautiful gray color, I'm going to come back on top now. And I'm going to charge in a mixture of the maroon perylene and burnt umber. Maroon perylene and burnt umber. And if I do it right, <laughs> uh, horsewoman, it's a cartoon with the boy kid and his grandpa close that's close it's not quite right but that's pretty close all right i think i'm going to stop painting on that wing look at i think it looks kind of neat just like that i'll stop painting on that wing before we go too far and i'm just going to i'm going to alter the color of this tail here just a little bit and then I'm going to paint the last little bit of this tail because the last, these last really long feathers are just a bit lighter. Uh, well, they're a little, a little different anyways. So I'll give you all a clue. It, the, the, it is a cartoon and it's, it's on Disney. You can actually still watch it on Disney. Or Disney Plus or something like that. Um, boy, I'm looking up here. I, I like the way this is starting to look. It's starting to look nice. We do have a little work. I have a little bit of a run here that we'll have to fix. But if we don't, I, I'm not going to worry about it. And, of course, I didn't get the water drops in here quite like I wanted. I'm going to have to go back and work on there. It, Tim, it is Dipper from Gravity Falls. It's Dipper Pines from Gravity Falls. Um, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get some of this on here. <laughs> you get three points. <laughs> that's not gonna get you anything, but I'm gonna give you three points for that. I think that's fantastic. I actually went as Dipper Pines for Halloween a couple of years ago. The wrong I pulled the wrong color out into my palette here. I, I reached in and grabbed Quinacridone Rose, and I want a Pyrol Red, but it's going to be okay. I mean, you can see I'm mixing it with all my other colors anyways, so it's going to be fine. Okay, so <laughs> Dipper, Dipper Pines. Um, I don't know. I used to watch, you know, my kids. My kids are much older and they don't watch those shows. But that was one cartoon that I could always watch with the kids. <laughs> You'll take the three points. Um, I I thought it was wonderfully uh, inventive. I'm not I'm not plugging it or saying you should all go out and watch it or anything, but it was a wonderfully inventive, imaginative cartoon show. It wasn't just random violence. I guess there was some violence on it, but I'm not sure you can get away from that in a cartoon nowadays anyways. Uh, but it was a fun cartoon to watch. And uh, so, so I have a funny story to tell you all. This happened, this happened to me today, um, and everybody thinks it's the strangest thing in the world that it happens to me. 
So I had a meeting today at my work and my day job. God knows if I had to do this as a day job, I would, <laughs> I'd be st starving on the street. Uh, but I, I had I was in a meeting today and I was called upon to speak uh, in front of everybody who was in the meeting. It just so happened that there were 73 people in the meeting. It was a Zoom meeting. So everybody was on. We, we weren't together. I couldn't see anybody else in the meeting. You know, I couldn't look out of my office and see anybody else who was in the meeting. Um, but I had to, to speak in it. And I had told my manager... Oh, man, I just got a little bit into his eye. Oh, I don't like that. Let's see if I can get some of that out. That I will gladly stand up in front of people and talk. It doesn't bother me one iota to stand up in front of a group of people. A couple of months ago, I stood up in front of a group of 70 people and gave a, gave a talk. But for some reason, talking on a Zoom meeting makes me nuts. I told my boss that. So of course, so of course he was absent. So I had to speak in his stead today. And all the guys I work with, they're all like, well, that's the silliest thing I have ever heard. You do YouTube videos every week. You do Twitch. You're, you're speaking in front of you know, other crowds of people at work, how is it that you can be afraid to say something in a Zoom meeting where there's nobody at? And the answer is, I don't, I don't have any idea, but boy, I got, I got to the meeting and I knew I had to say something and all of a sudden I started to get twitchy. I'm like, ah, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I start making notes to myself. I got to remember to say this. I got to remember to say that. I'm making notes to myself. And then I say it. I say my piece. I probably did fine. I, I don't know if I didn't do fine. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's done with now. And I get out of the meeting, and my hands are shaking like this. And uh, one of my coworkers comes in my office. And he goes, "I don't understand you. <laughs> he goes, how can you get nervous about speaking in front of people like that? I'm like I don't know. But we, uh, we. I laugh about it. I'm like I don't understand. Let's see. My HB still likes to watch. Natalie, your husband, HB, I'm assuming, still likes to watch the cartoons he watched with our kids like, oh, Phineas and Ferb. Yeah, kind of like Phineas and Ferb, too. They're, they're pretty funny. Okay, so now I've painted some red on here, and I've kind of gone outside of the lines, and I didn't want to go outside the lines. But I've got to decide now how I want to paint the rest of this bird. And I think what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start here. And I'm gonna let's let's talk about what we're gonna do. I need to darken up. I, I just just look at the reference photo, right? This has a nice layer of paint and it's a dark brown, right? It's sepia. It's a nice dark brown color, but it, the it color intensity isn't near the same as what I have over there. So I need to make this darker all through here, and kind of up this wing a little bit here. And if I can blend some right over this little water mark right here i think that'd be great and then i might i might take a little bit here and you can see it's kind of dark here and just extend this up to kind of connect this area with this area down here so i think that's where i'm going to go with this so i'm going to grab a little bit of sepia and I'm going to be sure to mix that because down here it needs to be red. So I'm going to mix a little bit of that maroon in there. And I'm going to put another layer on here. Let me just go right up this wing. The other thing that this is going to do, other than, you know, replicate our reference photo from over there, the other thing that this is going to do how am I going to do this? I'm going to go this way. Is it's going to put a dark, a really dark here, right next to a light. 
which means for us that, there we go. It means for us that it's going to push this wing out. As soon as we start putting a dark behind this wing, it's going to push that wing right out and push it towards us. There we go. That's that's the dark I want. Now I can start to blend that up. Just blend this up really nicely. Like I said, if we can get over that That little water mark there, I don't know that calling it a water mark is right, but that little watery area, then so much the better. And I don't want to take too much color off the back. I like the nice orange that's on there. So I think I'm going to leave it kind of like that. So you can see how dark I have it there. Maybe, maybe I need to round this out a little bit more. This looks a little square-ish. Let's see if we can do this. Sometimes if I, when I see something like that and I go back to it for a second time, and I, if I don't have my brush dried off quite enough, then I'm going to get a weird tide line in there. And I'm going to do the same thing, but a slightly different color on the bottom side of this wing too, right? So... Right, uh, let's see, we've got to make a decision right under here. This is all pretty dark under here. That leg, this whole leg back here, or leg, the feathers on that leg, that's all pretty dark back there. Let's see, we can run this up here just, we can bring this up just a little bit more. There we go. So what other questions? You guys must have other questions. You must want to know some other things. Happy to answer whatever questions you have. So I would encourage you to take advantage of of that I will say for any of you who are on discord I was in the discord uh, channel before the uh, stream started had my oop I thought I set it right down here I had my trusty ukulele I was playing ukulele while you guys were doing whatever it is you're doing I was that's how I, oftentimes, how I relax before the show anyways. I just grab my old ukulele and start to play a little bit. All right, I'm going to try to get my purple here. This purple is, it's not the strongest purple in the world. And I'm going to put just a little bit of, of um, neutral tint with it, which is already a little purpley. And I'm going to... Let's start to put some color on here. Bicycle Repairman is here. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Good to see you again. I'm glad you could make it. Let's see. And this old guy... Some darker colors that come all the way down there like that. I popped into the button, uh, but not until just before YouTube started. I think I turned it on at about 7.30. That's okay, by the way. <laughs> you, oh, you just missed me playing ukulele, which means you didn't miss anything at all. <laughs> it was. I enjoy it. But um, I don't know that I'm all that good at it. I do try to make it fun. 
played a selection of, uh, I played some, let's see, what did I play? I played some Jimmy Buffett. Um, you got to play some uh, Israel, I don't even know how to say his last name, Kama Kamoko, <laughs> Israel, the guy who does Somewhere Over the Rainbow. I, I don't, I honestly, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Some hugely long Hawaiian last name with a lot of, well, a lot of vowels and a lot of consonants, I guess. There's a lot of both in there. I played a little Frank Sinatra on there, a little Elvis. It was, it was kind of fun. Like I said, if anybody wants to show up next week, I, I this week I started it about a half an hour early, and uh, then I ended it, oh, eight minutes before to give myself time to go and fill my water up. And uh, yes, is Izzy <laughs> is. Like I said I don't <laughs> could tell you how to actually pronounce his last name, but. All right, and now I'm going to put a little bit of this um, on the top here. I'm just noticing this is this is not uh, necessarily blending the way I would like to blend this. I had used that's not so bad. I don't, I just don't, I don't want that big hard block between all of those feathers there. If you look at the feathers on the back, <laughs> pointed up there, on the back of the bird over there, they blend together. And I want to do that here. Um, well, he looks, he's got some texture. I'll, he's definitely got some texture on here. I'm always striving to get some texture on here. He's definitely got some. I'm not sure it's exactly the texture I wanted, but he's got some. I sometimes forget um, that, you know, there's, there's two different... Yes, that's him. Israel Kama Kama Kawaii Ole. So of course I couldn't say it. Holy cow. Um, I, I, some of my colors, right there, you have, you have staining colors and you have um, granulating colors and uh, the, th you know, phthalo blue, phthalo green, um, a permanent alizarin crimson, to some extent, azo orange. Those are great staining colors, right? The uh, purple that I have on here, the cobalt green, the cobalt blue. Those are granulating colors. They do a great job of granulating, um, and they stay on top. And then there's another kind of color group that nobody says anything about. And it's colors that don't really granulate, <laughs> but don't stain either. They're just kind of colors that go on there. And on some papers, on some papers, my a sepia acts that way. It just doesn't like to just does not like to um, stay where it's at. So oftentimes, if I put a second coat on something, it will it, it will just start pushing all over the place. And I suspect uh, that down here, that's kind of what I've got going on. Where's my green? It's kind of what I've got going on there. And so... But, wow, that got dark in a hurry, didn't it? 
Um, that's really funny. It's I, I look up. I look up there. I look up there on my monitor, and this is like super dark, and it's not nearly that dark on my on my table. Because I want you to be able to see. Oh, there I pulled some of it back. I want you to be able to see that nice greenish blue spot right there. So I think when that dries, that's going to be really nice. Let's see. When you glaze, like when you went over his front feathers the second time around, do you use the same color strength mix? Um, uh, which makes it darker, or do you use a color darker and add more paint? Um, that's a good question. I like to... Uh, because I like to do a lot of blending, uh, I will put a darker mix on, typically, I'll put a darker mix on and then blend it out, which then takes it back to more of a strength of the other mix. But, but then it'll leave down here, this bit, much darker, and, and it'll blend off to be nothing up here. And the same thing over here. It's probably a lot darker here, and then I've blended it up, and it's gotten much lighter. So uh, a little bit of a little bit of both in there. I, it's kind of a cop out answer. I'll be honest with you, but um, I, I like I will use a stronger mix, but then I blend it out, and it it takes some of that strongness away. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm going to I'm going to drop down a brush size here. Uh, I'm going to go to a four, and I want to start putting some details on this tail back here. So we have two types of detail. I, if you can see it, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, there are stripes on the tail, and then there's kind of like the stripes go this way. And then there's like broken feathers, which kind of go this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of our darker gray color here, make it a slightly warmer by adding a little bit of brown to it, and I want to designate some of the broken areas for these feathers. And you guys, I think you guys have all seen me do this before. I like to do this. And if I need to, I don't know, it doesn't need to be a, a ton of stuff. If I need to, I can... I can blend a little bit of this out, but it's got some of this breaking and banding in here. Just, just enough to give it some visual interest. See, and I'm trying hard not to put my, <laughs> put my, Put my wrist, put my wrist in any wet anything here. I do like to do that. And then I'm gonna put right down the top of this. Feather line. And all of a sudden, let's see, I'm gonna let's give a little line down here too. All of a sudden, without doing too much to this. We've got a little, we've got a little extra interest on that tail. Look, all of a sudden, uh, yeah, the granulation, yeah, right. Look at it. Let me see. You can get it whoop, up here. Look at how, look at how much that um, cobalt purple dropped out. Right. It's a, it's a ton. I'm telling you, that is the weirdest color. Not necessarily weird, bad. It's just a weird uh, color. And then. Right. I want to make sure that we all can see that these are two feathers down here on his tail. By just making one of these a little darker, maybe there's a little bit of shadow on that, right? Maybe that's all that is. It's a little bit of shadow on that bit of feather. It's underneath. Now we have two feathers, one on top of the other. When, when this is dry, or when this is dry... 
We'll come back. We'll put a couple of stripes on here. Whack, whack, whack. And we'll be done with that. Okay. I want to come back to this wing. And I want to put, I want to make sure that you can see down here. That there are a couple of individual feathers. And I'm not going to paint on too, too many real feathers in here. I'm going to let the viewer's imagination add some of these feathers. So I'm just going to drop in a couple of lines here and there. But the, the big things are going to be down here. And you're going to see... This is dark enough. All of a sudden, you're, it's gonna, your imagination is just going to make that into the right feathers down there. Right? Those are the big, long flight feathers. And if you've never been lucky enough to see a pheasant in flight, oh, they have huge wings uh, that spread way out. They're beautiful. Beautiful birds. And look as this dried, I got a lot of that color back. I don't want to do anything else with that. What I do want to do while I'm thinking about it is I'm going to take a little mix of that maroon and I'm going to add some of this um, pyrol red to it. I just want a slightly darker mixture because I'm going to add in a few details here in this well it looks like it looks like it's black when I look at my screen but it's not really that dark it's actually pretty light but just see actually I think I want it even darker than it is just drop in some Some dark bits here and around his eye. There, look at that, right? Just a little bit of dark in there. Give me just a bit of color in here. Actually, this guy's coming together kind of quicker than I thought he was going to, or she. No, he. No, this is a. This is a. This is, one, this is a he. He's got this, I don't know what this is called. Like he's got his uh, baseball cap on backwards up here. He's got that little, that little thing there. Yeah, he's looking, he's looking pretty good. Or at least I think so. Does anybody else think? Anybody else think he's looking pretty good yet? He's coming along. I, the more I'm looking at him, the more I'm really liking this back here. I'm glad I didn't rush to try and fix this too much. I had, I think I might have lost quite a bit of, of that um, modeled look under there. And, and you know what I'm not, oh, I've got to do, I'm, I'm going to, if I could speak, I'm going to, I'm going to paint in a couple of feathers up here. Regal. Wow. <laughs> Bicycle repair man. Always fantastic. Thank you guys. Um, I'm going to paint in a couple of feathers up here and that's going to help maybe redefine this line a little bit between, uh, I don't know that I need too much definition there, but. A little bit here and I'm gonna paint some feathers in down here so we can see them and maybe we'll put in some dark flecks along here too that'll give it this a lot of um, a, a lot of uh, interest there uh, let's see I'm waiting for this so I'm gonna jump or I'm jumping around a little bit I, I know I know I'm jumping around a little bit point where I just <laughs> for me this is always always hard 
um, and I, I try to I try to tamp it down a little bit because it's it's starting to to finish and it's starting to look good and I'm like oh I can let me let me just put this little bit on here real quick let me just do a little bit and I can make it look I can make it look good I can do this and it doesn't need it doesn't need too much quite yet we're still good <laughs> I've got to keep reminding myself. Just slow down a little bit. You're doing good. Grab a little, grabbing a little bit of Payne's Gray and mixing it in with my Burnt Umber. I'm going to use that for uh, his legs down here. Maybe a little bit more Payne's Gray than I have in there. His legs are, they have a little bit of warmth, a little bit of brown to them. Uh, but they're still they're still a bit gray and I want to make sure that they don't look exactly like uh, the feathers that are around there so I'm 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 okay to leave them a little bit more gray than maybe than maybe they would normally be I don't need to do a whole lot with his legs they're not going to be a focal point of this or anything. Um, they're just kind of there. Okay, so I got we've got a couple of things to do. I don't even know how long have we been doing this. We're going an hour. We're going an hour. I'm going to get a drink here real quickly. Mm. Just water tonight. No tang. No tang. Uh, so we've got a couple of things to do. Let's just stop and take stock of where we're at. Uh, we've got some feathering to do here, a couple up here, and then I need to wait for his legs and his beak and his, I don't know, I don't know what this is called, his head feathers <laughs> up here, because this guy... I think does need a very light background. He needs a background, and I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow underneath him. You can see I've already kind of drawn that shadow in. And the reason I know that he needs a background and some, some grass anyways is because I didn't draw any feet on him. His feet, just like in the picture, are in the grass. So if they're in the grass, I've got to paint some grass. Um, whether I'm, <laughs> whether it's going to turn out or not, it's going to be Michael grass, which is going to be a little, <laughs> a little interesting. Okay. It's got a beautiful yellow eye and I'm going to try to give him a nice yellow eye and I, I kind of forgot about this little area. He's got some color here, too. Actually, some little feathers underneath his eye there. My chickens have little feathers on it. One of them has little feathers under there, which is interesting. I don't know why that would be. Oh, yeah, he's looking good. Okay, um, I'm going to keep this. And what I want to do is, uh, let's see. What I want to do is get rid of some of this color. So let me, I'm just going to take this off. I'm just scraping it off with the largest brush I happen to have right here. Actually, I don't need to take it all off. His crest! Thank you, Tim! Thank you, his crest! There we go. <clears throat> Alright, so now this is always fun to do. I'm just going to throw some color out here. And uh, Tim, you asked the question, do I use the same intensity? Do I use a higher intensity? W when I paint on feathers, um, it all you really need is something. It doesn't need to be a lot. It doesn't need to um, make a huge difference in it. But I think when we go on here, you'll see what we do need. We do need to have a hard edge and a soft edge, right? So you'll see, I think, as we, as I do this, right? There's, 
one feather. I'm going to take that one feather and just pull it out a little bit. I'm going to do one. Let's see. I know he's got one big one right here. So I'm going to take this line. And I'm going to follow this up to there. This is also a good time if you've made a made kind of a boo-boo somewhere. You can We can cover that up a little bit. And this is what I was afraid of. This paper and these browns aren't sticking as well as I had hoped. So the answer is a little more paint, a little less water and I think we can deal with this. Get that big, big feather right there. Now I've got to get this almost dry so I can pull just the tiniest little bit of this out. Oh, it's letting me down. Oh, why, why, why? It's okay. It's okay. We can fix it. All we're going to do is we're just going to leave it as a line. We'll just draw it as a line. We won't worry about it. Come on, give me a little bit more. Oh, I wish this had worked. But you can see, yes, 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 I'm using Strathmore paper and Strathmore is letting me down. Oh, Strathmore. You know what? I actually I actually pulled out uh, my, my pack of Arches paper and I was like, you know what? I really like this guy. I'm going to use this Arches paper and let's see how it goes. And then right at the end, I kind of went, eh, I'll just do, I, have, I still have this big stack of this... Um, Strathmore paper. It's it's I have a I have a drawer full of it over here, and it's just labeled labeled wood pulp paper, and so I've got I don't know how many different um, three or four different wood pulp paper um, brands of paper in there and. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it lets me down, like right now. And I'm putting on some big kind of round feathers on there. It, I think it's going to be fun. We'll put a little bit of black on there. I'm putting on some kind of big round feathers on there. Um, they probably are a little more V-ish shape, but um, redo it again on arches. I might do that. A uh, crest of feathers on his crown. Um, crest of feathers on his crown, on his head. Okay. Uh, the rest is plumage. Okay. Oh, the, it's a crest of feathers on his crown. The rest of his, all the rest of his feathers are plumage. He's looking great. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for sharing your technique, strategy. I'm super amateur, but I've uh, been most successful with birds. Okay. Awesome. I love birds. Um, I'm usually pretty successful with birds. This guy notwithstanding, boo, 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 come on, act right. Um, I love painting birds. Birds are so exciting, and you can paint birds in so many ways, and they still look really cool. Um, uh, Tim, this guy will be my next subject. You love the choice. That I'll, I'm glad. And Tim, uh, I would love to see what it looks like when you're done. Drop it in my Discord channel or something. Um... Uh, I would love to see what it looks like. I got a stack of Montval paper and I like it. Montval, Canson Montval. I use that when I go um, and do plein air sometimes. It's it's not bad. I don't know if it's cotton though. It's not cotton. The Montval is not cotton. I do know that. Okay, I think I have yammered on enough that Everything that needs to be dry is dry. So let's do this. I've already got some green going in here. 
Uh, I'm going to grab, because I like it, I'm going to grab my phthalo green. I'm going to get a nice puddle of phthalo green going right here. Will do. Okay, awesome. That'd be awesome. I love seeing um, what other people paint. And if you want me to, I'm happy to make comments about it. Some people would prefer if I make comments on it. Some people would prefer I not make comments on it. I can go either way. I'm happy to. I, I don't give any harsh criticism because you know what? We're all we're all trying. And if I think something is good or bad, it that doesn't matter because you know what? You know what's kind of cool? If you go to an art museum, you're going to see stuff that you think is good and you think something that is bad and somebody else is going to see it a different way and they're going to think something's good or bad. So I've, I've learned over the years that art is, art is not good. Art is not bad. If it, it's, it's art. It came from somebody's heart. They wanted to do it. They want to uh, elicit in you some kind of feeling. And so accept that for whatever it is and, and go with it because, uh, no, it's just kind of the way it is. I mean, you know, not, not even, I don't, I don't know. After <laughs> I used to go to um, like the Los Angeles County Museum of Art with my wife and some stuff I'd look at and I go, I used to go, Oh my God, this is horrible. This is an art. And the older I get, I go, you know what? Some of that stuff was cool. And I kind of dismissed it out of hand. So I don't, I don't dismiss anybody's paintings uh, just out of hand for any any reason. Um, having said that, I, I do oftentimes make suggestions on how I think it could uh, you could make things better. But even with that, take it with a grain of salt. It's just what I say, and it doesn't really matter. I do I do preach to people that you should be you. Don't don't necessarily listen to others, but be you as an artist. Take what you do best and make it your own. And that's kind of what I've, that's kind of how I've uh, tried to do uh, all or most of my artwork is, is I do it my own way. I don't, I certainly don't do any kind of classical approach to anything. And... Uh, and I like the way my art turns out more often than not. So I don't know where I'm rambling with that. I like the pheasant and the tractor. Okay. Um, I love that. Tra I, I love the way that tractor turned out. I'm totally stoked about the tractor. I hug it up in my office. <laughs> I don't know uh, who suggested that. Um, the, woman, the woman from Australia suggested that. And I'm, I'm, I'm super happy she did. Let's see. I like it better. Uh, Horsewoman, you like the Montval paper better than the Strathmore paper. I'm with you. Um, the Montval paper is better than Strathmore paper. I don't know about that weird place, though, where... Um, I've got, I've got a lot of paper that I need to use. And so I'm trying to use some of it. <laughs> I try, I, I'm, I'm obviously trying to use some of it because I'm using it. Um, and I make the, make the best of it as, as I can. So I'm trying to mix in a few extra colors here. Right, some ochres and some reds. One of the things I like to do is in your foreground, if you're painting, you know, grass or a field or a beach or some such thing as that, find a way to work in a little bit of red in your, in your foreground. That red, even if it's not a lot, that red will help to um, bring that portion of the foreground forward a little bit. Just kind of the same way that if you 
if you've ever taken a class and they've said, well, in order to make your distant hills look distant, you need to make them blue or at least a blue tint. Same idea, right? Blue pushes things away and red pulls it towards you. So if you can mix in some reds somewhere in your painting in the foreground, it'll pull that bit towards you a little bit. Um, let's see. I like the old bee cottons. I heard bee was bought and the new paper is pulp. I have some of the old bee cotton paper and it drives me nuts. It is, it is cotton. I don't know what the new bee paper is. Uh, the old bee paper was 100% cotton. It was super light and their sizing on it was really weird. Their sizing was... Um, I don't know if it was super light or, or just a strange formulation, but it, it would, it would always dry super, super fast and it would always kind of screw everything up for me. Um, if I would go to paint in one area and I would, if, if I'm painting with arches paper or, um, Fabriano paper or something like that and I put a line down and then I paint over here and I come back to the line I can always get right back to it with the um, B paper I put a line down and it's there I can go a line and then I go right back to it and it's it's a line oh let's see I don't know it's it's tough I always find I have to pre-wet whatever area I'm painting when I need the uh, or when I paint with B paper I always have to pre-wet Let's see. I only use wood pulp paper for my initial sketches, never for a finished painting, the thing I learned decades ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. You'll have to be on the lookout. Oh, horsewoman, you'll have to be. A, you, you need to frame. I need to frame it like the, the uh, you're talking about I need to frame the tractor. I, I love that tractor. I might. I, I, I have it. It's right behind my head at my office. Let's see. Um, Natalie, don't wait too long. You've heard it's been discontinued. Holy cow. Uh, Tim says, great tip, red in the foreground, blue in the way. Yes, yes, right. Um, sizing degrades over time. Yes. Oh, and Natalie, you're saying it doesn't matter what you're going to use because everything dries up super fast in Phoenix. Anyways, <laughs> was... The Strathmore was sized weirds too. Um, I have some, I'll have to find out where it is. I was given a, a block of Strathmore watercolor paper from about 1979. And uh, I, it looks much like the normal Strathmore paper, just like this, only it felt weird. So... Who are you saying? Jacqueline, you're saying sizing degrades over the time. It was uh, it was super weird. It was almost as though there was no sizing on it at all. Um, it just kind of took it and sucked it right in, and that was it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just looking for a scrap piece of paper here. I'm going to mix up a, a neutral dark, okay? And I think you've all heard my take on neutral darks before, the, right? Um, I could use black. Black's not really a neutral dark, but uh, I want a dark area so that when I come back in here on the feathers, just like on the bird, I can put in some of those black marks. Oh, Timber, I just knocked my water over. So I'm going to grab just this old sheet of paper here. And I just want to look to see, I want to get the water right, I want to get the, the color kind of right, uh, just so I can get it on there. So many times I've put color on paper before, and it'd be totally too dark, and I'm like, oh no! <laughs> it's way out of line with everything else, and sometimes I put it on, and I go, oh god, it's not nearly dark enough. Um, so I just want to... I think that's not too bad. 
if I get a little bit of water off of that, I think that's okay. And this guy's got some, oh, yeah, I almost did it. Let me go from this angle. He's got some black marks here and there on him, on his back, right? Running down here. Those look awfully big. Let me drop down a brush size. Those are awfully big. I kind of wish I hadn't have done that, but we'll figure it out. Oh, that's a much better size. Some black marks on his back. Almost, I almost think like a royal cape, right? <laughs> this is what he's kind of got on him. And then down here, there's some that kind of go the opposite way. They're a little bit bulkier, and they kind of go the opposite way on the ends of some of these. Um... On the end of some of these uh, feathers, at some point I'll think of what those things on a covering a bird are. I don't know. Something like that. So it's got some marks here, and they kind of keep coming up here. They're going to get a little smaller as they come up. A couple of them might have gotten a bit large, but that's okay. Look, I flip them around this way, and you don't really even notice that they might be too large or too small. I'm going to put just a couple more in here. Look at that. Look at All right. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm hoping this is quite dry enough. What I need to do, you need, I need to invent an artist bridge. Um, you know, I've seen those people who have like just a stick and they hold a stick uh, like here and then they rest their hand on it. Like I've got this giant paintbrush, right? I could put this, I could put this down and then rest my hand on that. I've seen people do that. They get like a big ball of tape on here. That is kind of what I need. <laughs> it would, I'll go back in there. Uh-oh. That really would help. It really would help. <laughs> uh, let's see. Now I need to make kind of, I'm going to make my own kind of a gray. A green gray, but I need to start with. Let's see. There we go. I'm not going to use. Oh, that's way too much. An acrylic bridge. An acry, is that what that's called? Is an acrylic bridge? Those things that people use that they lean their hands on when they're drawing and painting. I don't. Honestly, I don't really know. Okay, so I've got something here that's a greenish, bluish, gray. I can just grab all those colors and throw them in there. And I don't want, you know, I always go around with this, right? What color is a shadow, right? I don't, I don't know what color a shadow is. A shadow is a darkening of whatever color. Uh, the, the light is is on or is not on, as the case may be, right? So, a lot of people just use blue and they go, oh, I'll just use ultramarine and that's fine. And, and actually, in some applications, it works quite well. I just don't like doing it. <laughs> so, I like to um, try to make my own colors. And this color has some definite green to it so it should fit on our our painting just fine there we go does that look like well it looks awfully thin doesn't he let's send him out this way a little bit I drew that awfully thin
I think that's better. All right, now at least he's standing there doing something. Whoops. I don't know if you guys can even see him there. He's standing there doing something. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to take some of my green here. Darken that up just a little bit. And then right out of here, I'm going to, going to, Oh, I was going to pull just a little bit of a couple of blades of grass out of there. And there's maybe a couple of blades of grass sticking out of the sun over here, sticking into the shadow. I don't know. <laughs> I love putting little blades of grass here and there. Usually I put it around feet or tires or something like that. Well, I just thought maybe one or two sticking out of the out of the shadow there would would help the edge of that a little bit. Maybe it does. I don't know. I guess it kind of does. I don't know. It can look so weird with just a shadow, especially since he's on a grassy area, right? It can look a little can look a little weird. And I'm just gonna pull some of this out this way. I don't want a super straight edge, right? If he's in the grass, he shouldn't have a super straight edge. I don't know. How's he looking? I think he looks okay. Awesome painting in. I was waiting to have a... Oh, bicycle repairman's got to go. Okay. Bicycle repairman, thank you for stopping by. Very much appreciated. Hope to see you uh, soon later. You usually come to uh, Twitch streams when I have this. So hopefully I'll see you there. Mall sticks are, are for... Are for or for oil plaintiffs. <laughs> I think there's a little um, uh, autocorrect in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, a mall stick or a mall stick, a paint painter stick, but they only have maybe an oil painting. Interesting. Um, a, a horseman says the shadow is the reflection of the color it hits. It's kind of the, I always think of it as the absence of sunlight on whatever it is. So if the color is, you know, red like this, the color's still going to be red like this in shadow. It's just going to be muted because the bright, the bright lights don't hit it and can't bounce off of it so much. Um, I'm going to, I see a few areas here where I want to do a little touch up. And then I think we're going to be pretty much done with this, right? I, I see his wings here. I don't like the way the dark has gone between his flight feathers here. So I just want to put those in a little bit more. That's probably going to end up too dark. Oh, and we've got his eye here. need to put in there. He's got a nostril here. And what do I have? I've got I've got a gel pen. I'm holding it off the screen. I've got a gel pen over here that we probably need to well just with an eye even he looks he looks better, right? Put a little bit of highlight here. I don't know, a little bit there. It's always uh, it's always a gamble where to put a highlight on what you just painted. <laughs> just a couple here and there. You can't put a highlight on a feather because feathers don't they don't have highlights. But where he's got the skin or his beak up here, we really can. Anyway, that little bit, I think, helps. I'm going to sign this guy under his tail over here. And uh, <laughs> Jacqueline, you hate uh, autocorrect. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> autocorrect is horrible. <laughs> had a senior moment with the uh this evening in your studio i was switching 
colors and was stumped on the yellow colors. They all look the same. Keep reaching for lemon yellow. <laughs> hey, it happens. You know what? Stuff happens. Um, not a big deal. <laughs> it just happens. All right, so I'm uh, going to do a little reflection here before we, before we sign off. Uh, I'm looking at this, and I... I was a little dubious about it at the beginning, but I I, I love this area in here. I love the modeling in here and the, the lights and the darks and the oranges all on here. I, I love the way this looks. I, I would normally probably come back and put a couple of little accent lines in here to show you what direction the feathers are going, but I love this so much. I didn't want to touch that. What I don't love so much is right up here, this little bit uh, where I have that tide line right there for some reason. Oh, that bothers me. It bothers me. It bothers me. It bothers me. Uh, the other thing is that I got a couple of these a little too big, and I'm not convinced they're quite uh, dark enough. I, I'm a little hesitant to make them too dark and stand out too much, but... Um, that's basically the, the, the intensity I was going for. I'm not sure I thought about it properly in my head. Um, I do like this shadow area. I like that it's all jaggedy around here and not super specific to any one thing. Maybe I could go in and put some other grasses in here. I don't think that I'm going to do that. I do. I love the color of this tail. The color of this tail actually matches the color of that pretty closely. The modeling is pretty cool. Uh, again, I think maybe I didn't have the right brush when I did these lines. Uh, they just don't look as crisp to me as I wanted them to be, but they still look neat. Um, and, and the stripes on the feather here, kind of the same thing as these uh, black bits here. Uh, maybe I didn't quite get it. Uh, moving up to his head. I love this area right here. This has got a dark blue. Um, you can, oh, I hope you guys can see. It's got this beautiful dark blue up here and it comes and fades down into this green. I think that is lovely. I love that. And I love the darkness on his head up here. I think if I were to do this again, I would probably come and I'd put some little tiny feathers up here sticking out just to break up that line. Um, overall, I like it. I think that the paper was not working for me on this one. It worked against me a little bit, and that's on me. Leave it for a day. <laughs> Leave it for a day. Look back at, uh, at it then. Yeah, I do. I'm... I'm I, I, I notice all these things as I'm going through. And I'm like, going, oh, that's not right. That's not, that's, that's not how I wanted it. And I try to leave them until the end. I try, to, I, I try to recognize that I have that thought and then leave it to the end, not dwell on it. Because so many times when you're painting a painting, if you leave something be for a couple of minutes, it kind of works its way into the picture and, and ends up looking nice more often than not. If it looks a little weird at the beginning, it's going to come around at the end and it will look great. So uh, this is what I've got for you guys this evening. Oh, it's an hour and a half only. It was quite short for me. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, I like him. I hope you guys like him. We are our worst critics. That is true. We are. Um, I'm okay being a bit of a critic. I, I, I'm not going to beat myself up over this. It's it's one painting, and I might paint this guy again. I, I love the colors on this. I love the colors, and I love these birds. So I might paint this again on a little different paper. I bet you I'll have completely different result. Um, uh, let's see. Down below, links to social, Discord down there. What else is down there? Oh, my website is down there. If you want to make a donation, it's down there to help keep the studio going. If you don't, that's fine too. Uh, a reminder that I still have the challenge for the month of September on my Discord channel. It's almost done. I'll be putting mine up, my challenge painting up this week. 
next week i'll be back doing another painting i don't know what it's going to be yet if you guys have suggestions leave them down below or or put them in discord for suggestions um i don't know that's <laughs> that's about all i've got so everybody tim natalie horsewoman jacqueline uh who else was here i don't even know who was here whoever was here i'm sorry if i'm not getting to you my mouse isn't working i can't uh i can't go back i don't know i think that's just about everybody who oh may was here Treveni was here zc was here bicycle repairman was here thank you all so much for helping to make this an enjoyable stream for me i hope i was able to make it an enjoyable stream for you thank you for spending time with me in the studio i hope to see you back next week eight o'clock pacific uh here on youtube and this weekend usually it's like a saturday sunday morning something i'll be doing a mashup over on twitch and with that i am going to bid you have a great night and we will see you next time oh one do i do portraits i i I typically don't. <laughs> People are hard. <laughs> but I will take up the challenge if, if you really want me to. That's all I've got for you guys. Thank you all so much for being with me this evening. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>